And so remember I was telling you guys about having to change either this uh, valve cover or having to try to figure some way to lower the coil pack bracket. This is what I was talking about. Uh, you see how how close this is? Contact wise, and of course you see this this plug here, this is where the injector would sit for the plug for the injector. And I just, it just isn't quite enough room. I mean, I may be able to squeeze it in there. So this is the, this is the plug for the injector. Let's see if I can hang on. It, it'd just be a real tough fit, you know. And it's real close to the fuel rail. And this is, it really be a little higher than this because this is, see I'm a little bit off with the bolt bolt. So I still need to go up even a little bit more. It's just a little too tight. So originally, I just had to think of a way maybe to lower the bracket. But what I decided to do is just go ahead and order new ones. Um, originally, I went on. Uh, originally, I went on uh, GM Parts Direct, and I ordered just the standard ones that come on the CTSV or the the ZL1, and I think they were 263 plus shipping. So I think it came out a little around like 280 something. And then I ended up going on YouTube. Not YouTube, excuse me. <laughs> I went on eBay just to look for some other options, and I ended up actually finding some Holly manifolds of valve cover gaskets. Excuse me, excuse me. Now, I found some Holly valve covers that have the coil packs mounted individually, just like the Z01 and CTS stock ones do, and they only ran me uh, 230, and that was free shipping. So I probably saved myself 50, 50, 60 bucks. And I actually saw them on there for as low as 199. And that was with free shipping, but the 199 one said they shipped from China, and it was gonna take a little longer to get here. So the, the other ones I saw, they said they're the same exact kind, uh, but they shipped out of a uh, somewhere on the East Coast. I can't exactly remember, and it only took two days to get here. And I ordered them. It's, it's Wednesday now. I ordered them on Monday. They're already here. So I'll show you those. Show you guys what those look like. That shot. But uh, this is what I got. Uh, Holly LS tall valve cover. Excuse me. Um, trying to, I'll link the part number below. I'm trying to. Let's see if it's on here. There we go. Um, 241-112. It does say they're made in China, but it's supposed to be Holly. I didn't know their stuff was made in China, but I guess maybe it is. Either way, <laughs> this is what it comes nice information about the warranty. This thing's actually pretty, pretty thick. Um, show you what it's like before, how they're sitting up higher. And I'll just, I'll just lower them down just like I need them. It has the instructions for everything. Um, actually, I'm just gonna take the factory hardware out of the other ones and uh, put them on these. Comes with the cap. Uh, I got the uh, black satin finish. Uh, I opted to go with the black satin finish because I was gonna paint them black or paint them to match um, the bronze. I painted the other stuff anyway, but since these already came painted black satin, but I can tell with the finish it would be easy to paint. I mean, they look good quality. They look Raise the valve covers a little bit higher too, in case one day I want to do some aftermarket rockers, which I plan to. Um, all I gotta do is just, you know, take the rubber grommets out of the old ones, or, or I'm gonna get new ones. The seals where the screws go. Yeah, I just have to take the uh, coils and pack part off the other bracket and mount them on here, and I should be good to go. All right, so here's what I ended up with with the valve covers, um, and it worked out great. Um, didn't really have to change anything. Uh, and I stated earlier that I was gonna uh, take my seals and rubber gasket grommets out of the old ones and put them in here. I didn't see the, the box actually had new hardware and seals, so I didn't have to do that. Uh, see the coil packs fit up right perfectly. I got plenty of space now between my coil pack and my fuel nozzle, fuel injectors right where the uh, plug is. So I got plenty of room now, you know. So I went ahead and put those on. Um, the original ones have the wiring harness kind of, they're in a plastic, kind of like a plastic loom. This little thing here, it was just something like that. It's pretty simple. You see, just just clamps, just snap all the clamps off. And it'll come right out. Um, let's see, went ahead and bolted down uh, tor the supercharger itself down. I'll put the lid on, bolted that down. I had my uh, extension harnesses. I'll put the link to where I got those from. Like I say, my EVAP extension harness right here. I had my uh, throttle body extension harness and then the extension harness for my map sensor. I already had a breakout harness before. I guess it came like that. So what I ended up doing was getting two, uh, getting a 90 degree specter elbow 
and a straight speaker adapter for the uh, math card. I, I kind of got rid of the uh, old style and went for the uh, the card style because it's a little more free flowing um, as opposed to you know the factory one has this this mesh. And it's really like I see it already kind of bent in, so I'm sure that'll restrict a lot of airflow. So the style I have now is just pretty much like a card, almost as if that screen wasn't there. It'd be a straight flow. Um, that's also not completely um, four inches. I just went and went ahead to a four inch. Uh, I did, I ported my throttle body to just slightly. Like I said, I know it's not really not gonna do much, but I had to put mine on backwards because it was interfering with the belt. Got the CTSB EVAP line that uh, connected pretty fine. Like I say, honestly, if I would have thought about it, I wouldn't even have spent my money on it. Like I say, usually I just get a fuel line, a regular rubber fuel line. Fits right in there perfectly. It's not really a lot of pressure on this thing, so that'll fit in there perfectly. I could just ran a regular flexible fuel line back to that and save myself. I think that was like 27 bucks. Um, I got a ZL1, the ZL1 fuel line. Oh, let's see if I can get you back here to see it. That's pretty much how that went out. The firewall, I bent it up and kind of towards the passenger side a little bit to try to lessen the angle. That was just long enough to fit there pretty perfect. Um, that's, I can't complain about that at all. Um, what else? Uh, all I'm doing right now is I'm going to just go ahead and uh, try to get my uh, intercooler lines, key exchanger lines hooked up and get that system bled. I'm going to connect the battery back in a second. I'm just going to look over and make sure I didn't miss anything. Um, say brake booster line, got the regular Z01. Brake booster line gives a nice factory look. Um, yeah, other than that, uh, everything else is pretty much stock like it was. Like I said, of course, I painted it, the valve covers, and like I say, the intake to kind of match my theme I was going with. Um, other than that, man, hopefully next time I play this, you'll be running, or at least I'll be purging the uh, heat exchanger. All right, y'all, so here's the finished result. Um, I'll get a better shot in the daylight tomorrow. It's not really that late. Uh, I think it's about 8.15 here. But uh, starting here, you know, dark early, so. Uh, this is everything right now. Um, got it set up pretty nice. I'm gonna go ahead and try to uh, get some fluid in here and purge this uh, intercooler pump. That's what it should do. Mm -hmm.